The first thing you need to know is how to aim your shot. Change your aim direction to aim at the target and pass this lesson. Picking the right club is another key to shot selection. Your current club is always displayed here. Change your club to aim at the target and pass this lesson. There are six basic shot types built into the game for you to use. Your current shot type is always displayed here. A full shot aims your club at its maximum distance. A choke shot aims you a little shorter than the club's maximum distance. A punch shot is a low shot used to get out of the trees or keep the ball under the wind. A pitch shot is useful when you get near the green. A flop shot is useful near the green when you need the ball to stop quickly. A chip shot is useful when you are right next to the green and have a lot of room to work with. Creating custom shots starts with knowing how to change your aim distance. Change your aim distance to aim at the target and pass this lesson. You can further customize your shots by using shot shaping. Your shot shaping meter will show up here when you are actively using it. Change your shot shape to aim through the rings and pass this lesson. There are three different ways to play the game. Each offers a unique swing mechanic and supporting settings. The arcade style uses a simple analog stick swing. Additional aids like zoom and an aiming arc make this an easy and fun way to play. When you pull down on the swing stick, the golfer's animation will begin. The backswing meter will begin to fill. When the meter gets full, you want to push up on the swing stick. A readout of your swing will appear after you hit your shot. The arcade style also gives you the ability to boost your power and add spin to shots. The power boost meter will show you how much power you are adding to your shot.
The spin meter shows you the speed and direction of your mid-air spin. The arcade style automatically shortens your swing animation as you aim for shorter shots. The backswing meter will fill quicker and the animation will come to a stop sooner. Now that you know how to play and your training is complete, you can keep this style, practice some more, or choose a different style. Now that you know how to play and your training is complete, you can keep this style, practice some more, or choose a different style. So many historic moments have played out before our eyes in major championships, and today two of the top players in the world are set to tee off. Rory McIlroy holding a one-shot lead over Martin Keimer. It's the final round of the U.S. Open Championship at Chambers Bay. You're going into you know, the final round of any golf tournament with a chance to win, especially a major championship. It's a huge buzz. You know, that's the only way I can describe it. It's the best feeling a golfer can have because you're in the mix and you're in with a chance to win one of the biggest tournaments in the world. It's an incredible feeling. It's something that um, you may only get to experience a handful of times in your life. So, you know, that, that atmosphere, you want to soak it in as much as you can and, and really enjoy it. Rory McIlroy coming off a strong performance yesterday, now making his way to that first tee box and looking to add another major championship trophy to his already growing collection. And Rich, there's no doubt both golfers will be nervous until they get that very first tee shot under their belt. The first tee shot is, is probably the most difficult because you've been thinking about that shot since the night before. Once you get that first shot out of the way, you calm down, you're a little more settled, you're not quite as anxious or nervous, and you sort of get into the rhythm of the round. You want to get off to the best start possible, and, and obviously that starts with, with that first tee shot. Well, there he is, Rory McIlroy, a past U.S. Open winner, set to tee off on what could be an historic day of golf, and set against the beautiful Puget Sound. Frank looked like a nice balanced swing, 
Well, the free-flowing action that we uh, find synonymous with Rory McIlroy in display, even under the nervousness of an opening tee shot in the final round of a US Open and just blitzed it down the fairway. That one carried a long way, stayed up in the sky forever. Perfect lie here, Frank. What's Rory got? Well, I expect something just slightly right of the flag. You want to avoid the hill and the bunkers on the right. And there's a little bit of a, uh, a gut or a chasm just over that left side of the green. So left, not a good option. About 145 yards away. Seems to like it. And headed for the fat part of the green. Looks to be a good one, Frank. Oh, nestles inside 15 feet, so a birdie chance coming up for Rory. Good birdie chance early here for McElroy. A nice place to putt from uphill, so he can certainly be aggressive with this. Should turn to the right. He can really get red hot with a putter. Let's see what McElroy does. Excellent start, Rory McIlroy. What a nice putt. I think making putts early in a round is very important. It, it sets the tone for the day and it gives you some positive momentum early. You see the ball go into the hole and it gives you confidence. You face a downhill putt at a US Open with greens that are as tricky as that. It just makes it even more difficult. I feel like you always face important putts no matter when it is, but Obviously, they're that much more important when, you know, it's the final round of a major. Now over to the second. McElroy with a challenging downhill putt. And I know it's early, but this is the type of putt that can really generate some momentum for the rest of the day. Well, this putt's only 12 feet, Rich, but it's downhill. And uh, because of that, it's going to be very, very fast. You're almost going to putt this like it's only about eight feet long. Allow the speed of the green to take it the extra distance. In. What a way to start this final round. Back-to-back -back birdies. After an impressive drive, Rory just 165 yards out faced with this uphill approach shot. He's going to play closer to about 175 yards though, Rich, because of that uphill. So probably an extra club. But uh, Rory, even though he grew up in Northern Ireland, where it's windy, is a naturally high ball hitter. It's a good strike, good swing by McElroy. And no problem finding the putting surface. How did that not go in? Oh, man. I just pushed it. Boy, that hurts. And he makes it for par. There's some times when there might be a weight on a tee box or you've played your shot and you're waiting on your playing partners to hit their shots and, and you just look around and you know you realize you know where you are, you know, because you don't really you know, you don't appreciate it that much whenever you're you're playing and you know, that's not what you're thinking about. You're thinking about trying to win a golf tournament and not really you know, taking in the beauty of your surroundings. So McElroy set to tee off here on the long par three ninth hole, appropriately named Olympus for its high perch above the course. Just a stunning view. And Rich, there's a great view from the front of this tee. You can really get a sense of the elevation change. 
big drop off, so consequently you're going to hit a club or two less than you normally would for that yardage. And the green, that shapes a little bit to the player's right, so this one is going to have to be all carry. Should be pretty good right there on the safe side. Well, he's taking the trouble out of play. Not a great shot, but not bad. Mm. This is an awkward length. Frankie took plenty of time on this birdie putt. He looked at it from three different angles. He forgot one very important ingredient. Yeah, pace. You can definitely fall in love with the line, even with approach shots as well, but obviously we see it more on putting. Rich, there's such a variety of short game shots required here at Chambers Bay. Um, even chipping, nothing's really straightforward. Bunker shots, they uh, vary so much in depth. Shallow bunkers to deep bunkers. There's a lot of variety required around the greens here at Chambers Bay. Okay, good shot on the dance floor. Rich, you get that feeling if there's going to be a moment. I think that moment is now. Trying to clean this up, make his par. Routine stuff for Rory, that's a par. Final few holes to play, especially of a major championship like the U.S. Open. Um, you know, it's what you've worked so hard for. It's what, you know, you've put all those hours of practice in for. And, you know, this is your moment. This is your moment to see what you've got against the best players in the world and test yourself at the ultimate level. Um, there's obviously a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, you don't want to let an opportunity like this pass you by. You don't want to let it slip. So to stay really focused, really concentrated, try to take one shot at a time, try and put the result out of your mind, control what you can control. Um, but saying that it is difficult with so many things going on around you, whether it be the crowds or it could be the person that you're going up against. You know, there's so many things that you can't control, but you know, the things that you can control, that's what you have to concentrate on and that's what you have to try and you know, do to the best of your ability. And if you can do that, that's what gives you the best chance to, to try and win a, a huge tournament like the US Open. So here at the 17th hole, tie atop the leaderboard, two former U.S. Open champions, two holes to play. This is one of golf's best moments. We talked about mental toughness on the first tee. It certainly comes into play here right now. And the 17th hole is named derailed. And it is going to be more than a test for both of these and could very well be the defining hole. See what the dominant number one player can do. Rory McIlroy now on the approach shot. McElroy now just to clean up and stay even with Kaima. That's a solid par putt. It really is amazing. You play 71 holes and you get to this point. One left to play. We're all tied. Martin Keimer, Rory McElroy, and Frank 
What does Rory need to do off the tee? He has to do what we've become accustomed to, and that's a great drive from Rory. There's two bunkers down the left side, plus a enormous amount of sand down the right side. Somehow, split the two, find the fairway, and this green, this par five green, will be in reach. What a great drive of the final hole. Frank, the great thing about these major championships is the slow buildup to moments just like this, and then it gets really tense. It's a dream scenario, Rich. You just dream that you're going to have the two best players in the game buying it out, coming down to the very last hole. That's exactly what we have right now. So far, they've provided great golf. It's going to take something even better than that right now to determine who's going to win. Now the third shot at the par five. Can still birdie the closing hole. You could hear a pin drop right now. It all comes down to this. Rory McIlroy to win the U.S. Open. He's done it. What a gutsy performance. McIlroy fighting for 72 grueling holes. Fighting through the tough conditions. Fighting off a stiff challenge from the great Martin Keimer. And Rory McIlroy has now won the U.S. Open Championship yet again. It's an incredible feeling to know when that final puck goes in on the 18th green that, you know, you've won, you know, a major championship at U.S. Open. Uh, you know, to put your name alongside the names on that trophy, that's something that's going to stay there forever, and it's something that I don't think you quite come to terms with right there and then. You know, it takes a few days to sink in, but you know, it's the ultimate, you know, it's the ultimate achievement in, in a professional golfer's life is winning a major championship. But at that moment in time, there's, there's no better feeling in the world. You know, to be able to do it again and put my name on that trophy uh, another time would, you know, it would, it would be very, very special.